good morning. You don't need a sermon after Rodney. I'm just going to let everybody go home. That was good, man. If you get let go and let God and actually do that, that's all you have to do. So I guess I need to talk for about 20 minutes just to make sure they'll do it. How's that? So we're going to talk about letting God set the pace today. Life is going exactly like you thought, correct? You made some plans last week, and even this week has just been perfect, right? Everything. My favorite videos are to watch people trying to put their boats in the water <laughs> and sink them over. And I, I watched one this morning. This is, this is what I do with my life now, apparently. They put the boat in the water. The back of the boat starts sinking, so they pull the trailer out. Yeah, don't pull the trip, and the boat sinks. And I'm like, what, what did you think was going to happen? But after I tell you today's story, you're going to be like, you know, Eric, you are going to sink a boat one day in your life with that kind of story. So years ago, I went to Burger King. I know I talk about McDonald's a lot. Apparently so much that people thought I lied about it because one of our guys, I, I actually didn't get fed last week and went by McDonald's and somebody from our church was actually fixing the Coke machines, handed me the food, but if you could have seen the surprise on their face, like the stories about McDonald's are true. <laughs> I mean, why would I lie about McDonald's? I would make up like Whole Foods or something. <laughs> I've never been to Whole Foods. I guess that, that's demonstrated right here. So, okay, this has nothing to do with the sermon, so forgive me. There's pressure on me today. Somebody came to me and said, I got friends here today. The sermon better be good. <laughs> well, you just ruined it. It was going to be till then. I've decided to change it. No. So anyway, so I have a youth group. I got four guys. We're in a small group, and we go to Burger King. This is years ago. And at that time, Burger King was advertising their new Arabica coffee. Any, any of you guys like coffee in here? Anybody love? Do you like coffee? Anybody in here have a Keurig? Anybody have a Keurig? You got a Keurig? All right, congratulations. That's half calf because I know you. All right. Um, so, anyway, tell somebody tell Twyla that I gave her coffee away. But anyway, so. Um, so we go to Burger King, and, and so they have like what looks like fresh ground coffee. So, of course, I'm looking at it like, is that just a picture of coffee? And it's got like the, the beans in the top, and I'm looking at the thing. And so they give us our food, and as I'm going through the line, the person leaves. Like, and this was before the pandemic. Like, I know nobody actually works anywhere anymore, but at this time, people used to like work at restaurants. And so, and so the person like went into the back. I don't know where they went. And the youth group like went around the corner to sit down with their food and I was getting my stuff. And I noticed on the side of the coffee thing was a red button, little bitty red button. And I thought, I wonder, I wonder if it really is Arabica bean coffee. I wonder if it really is. So I'm just going to get a little so I can smell it. And I, and I, I just pushed the button. I just pushed the button to get just a little, and what I didn't know is when you push the button, it's going to make an entire day of coffee grounds right then, right then. And so I push the button, and it goes, yung, 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 and starts dumping coffee. And I mean, there's nowhere to put coffee, and so there's a little bitty hole over here, and I'm now collecting handfuls, looking at where the register is. Help, there's nobody there. So I'm taking handfuls of coffee, thinking this is going to stop any minute. And it's not. And I am, I am dropping coffee from here to the little hole where you're supposed to put creamer. And just coffee now is just covering everything, my tray, every, everything. And I just got the tray. I went, I just ran. I ran away as an adult. <laughs> And I went over to where the students were sitting, and I sat down. And one of the students goes, because I guess I looked funky, they said, what happened? For some reason at that 
precise moment what had just happened suddenly struck me as funny and I could not tell them. I got to laughing so hard. And I don't know if you've had that happen, but I got to laughing so hard at the at the, just the craziness of a pile of coffee that I just left that I couldn't tell. I just said, I, <laughs> yeah. so one of the kids gets up, walks over there, looks and goes, oh my gosh, runs back to the table, goes, there's coffee everywhere. <laughs> one of the other kids gets up, goes up there. Right then the person steps to the register and one of the other kids in the group goes, hey, quit pushing the coffee button. So I had a debate. I had a debate at that point. I'm the adult. I'm the adult. I'm the adult. <laughs> so I had to go up and basically say, I'm an idiot. And uh, I pushed the button and I thought he'd give me a little. But it was like... <laughs> That's all that person heard. That person heard, door, 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 door. Idiot, 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 right? So... People have talked about what will be on my tombstone. I think one of two things. His last words were, what does this button do? <laughs> or, my favorite, personally, I told you I was sick. <laughs> or bacon. Bacon's good. By the way, we're giving away bacon next week for Father's Day. So, um, you got a little excited. That was good. So, you ever do something and wish you could take it back? I have many, you, Dave, come on now. He went, no, I haven't. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm going to ask your wife because I'm guessing there's a couple things she'd like you to take back. So, so here's the truth for all of us. We, we sometimes step out because we get in a hurry about something or we're trying something. And that's what happens in this story of Saul that we're going to look at today. And we're in 1 Samuel. And one of the things I've tried to talk to you about a little bit is there's these stories in the Old Testament. And I've actually heard pastors say, well, we don't teach out of the Old Testament at our church because that's the old covenant and we don't. Listen, you can learn lots of stuff from stories that are thousands of years old and you look at them and you go, I do the same thing. And so the purpose of Scripture so often, especially as we look at these stories, is examples and non-examples. And today we're going to look at this whole idea of for lack of a better word, just not being in a hurry. You know, we live our lives looking at the next speed bump. Some of you have not enjoyed a day in a long time because you spend your life just worried about whatever's next. And you might have just made it over a speed bump. Instead of celebrating that God helped you make it through that day, you're like, oh, but there's this coming up. And you spend your whole life worried and frustrated. And that's what happens in this story. And can I be honest? I don't blame Saul. I'm so ADD, I have gotten distracted about being distracted. And most of us, even if we're not ADD at all, even if like a doctor would never... We're ADD Christians because we're easily distracted by our trials and our struggles. So we're going to look at three things, and we're going to talk today about how to let God set the pace. And I want to say this from my heart. God is never fast enough for me. Never does things at the speed I'd like him to do. Never fixes things the way... Because I have all kind of advice for God. I've given God... Yeah, aren't you glad I don't run the world? All right, number one. After that story, you're like, mm, you're sinking a boat any day. Number one, surrender. <laughs> oh, by the way, time out. I got to tell you this. Somebody will come to me or email me after church and say, you know, pastor, saying something like that's going to make it happen. I I'm kidding. That's called a joke. Okay, just making sure you knew. All right, all right, here we go. So, surrender, although it could happen, I don't know. Surrender your schedule and... I have sunk a boat before, actually. I was just thinking... <laughs> I was in a canoe with my brother-in-law, and he said, paddle right, I paddled left, and we flipped the canoe. It's all right. He only rolled a couple times. All right. 1 Samuel 13, 5 through 7. The Philistines assembled to fight Israel with 3,000 chariots, 6,000 charioteers, and soldiers as numerous as sand on the seashore. Time out. Do you think there's a little exaggeration there? 
are you the same way when things aren't going well? When things aren't going the way you want, don't they suddenly become bigger? The doctor says to you, oh, you've got to come see me right away. I got the results of your test. And you're already, you know, you're going by the funeral home on the way to the doctor, right? I mean, you, you've planned it out. So that's what's happening here. So they start freaking out, and here's what happens next. They went up and camped at Micmash, which I just love that name. It sounds like a candy bar. This morning I got my Micmash out of the freezer. It was delicious. <laughs> East of beth Aven. When the Israelites saw that their situation was critical and their army was hard-pressed, they hid in caves and thickets among rocks and in pits and in cisterns. Now this next is just awesome. Some Hebrews even crossed the Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. That would be like me saying, and some of the guys left for Canada. They just said, well, I'm not going to battle. And they left the country. They literally left the country. That's what it says there. I know we just read it like, some crossed the Jordan. Like, no big deal. No, no. It's like, cross the Rio Grande. They're not in town anymore. So if you're the captain or the general or the head of the army, you're starting to freak out because you're looking and going sand on the seashore and my guys are taking off. Saul remained at Gilgal and all the troops with him were quaking with fear. I don't blame them. And so what did they want? They wanted action. Saul said, Saul was told, by the way, you wait for the priest to come and sacrifice. And Saul's seeing all this, and he is freaking out, saying, God, this wasn't the plan. Things are not going the way I want them to go. People are taking, do you not see what's happening? By the way, have you ever told God, do you not see what's happening? I've had that conversation with God before. God, are you not noticing this? Are you not paying attention? I hate catching traffic lights. I think that I should be an urban planner when I'm catching traffic lights. I pull up, I go, this light is not needed. My poor wife hears that a hundred times a day with me. I'm like, this is, a, this is another housing development. They could have just made everybody turn right. But no, they got to stop all of us. She's got to be like, okay, you've told me this. But instead, she just goes, yes, dear. Right? <laughs> and, so, and so if you drive through the wonderful, wonderful world of Oviedo, you will catch every light. And, and let me tell you why. Because those people are evil. No, that's not why. I honestly wonder sometimes if God has given the angels a clicker. And as I'm coming up to a light, they're like, Patience. <laughs> See how he does. Is he, is he doing that urban planning thing again? That's awesome. Don't you love that? Look at his wife. How patient. We're working on her patience too. Yeah. Next slide. Oh, he's trying to go faster. He thinks he's going to get it. Mm, stop. Yeah. Now, I don't just think that. Amy Grant used to have a song, Angels Watching Over Me. Do you remember that? It's the idea that you wouldn't get in an accident because some, I'm telling you, I'm going to get to heaven and an angel's going to come up and be like, you remember that day you were tailgating that guy who was going too slow? That was Gabriel. He wants to have a talk with you. He's right over there. See, too often we're in such a hurry thinking, I got to get from here to there. And we waste, listen, we waste time worrying, frustrated aggravated, worried about what could happen, worried about, you ever been in a hurry and you're not in a hurry? You know when you notice that you're in a hurry is when you pass somebody with red or blue lights or both. <laughs> I guess I'm not in a hurry anymore. <laughs> By the way, I passed 12 police cars yesterday on the way here. I was impressed at my lack of speeding. It was a member just... <laughs> Acts 14, I love what it says at the end of this verse. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting, listen to what it says here, committed them to the Lord, and then it says this, 
in whom they put their trust. So here's the question. God, am I going to trust you when I don't like how things are going? God, am I going to trust you when I catch the light? Am I going to trust you when traffic doesn't do what I want? Am I going to trust you when life doesn't go like I want? When the doctor doesn't tell me what I want? When those other people don't do what I told them to do? You know, those little ones that we had on purpose? God, can I trust you? And by the way, sometimes... That whole idea that Rodney talked about of letting go and letting God is being honest and just saying, God, right now, I don't want to trust you. Help me to trust you. God, help me to know that you'll work all this out. Help me to know that you're going ahead of me. One of my favorite stories about Corrie Ten Boone. Now, you've got to realize, Corrie Ten Boone was in concentration camp. She watched her family die. She was released early. Then she went back to Germany preaching about forgiveness. And yet the story that really stands out in my mind is her headed to the airport and there's a traffic jam and she's headed to a huge conference with thousands of people and the taxi driver hears her talking and he says, excuse me, are you okay? And she goes, oh, I'm just talking to the Lord, telling him if he has other plans for me, that's okay. And I'm thinking, that's huge faith. Do you know how many times I'm on the way to somewhere and I'm looking at the time and I'm going i got to make up three minutes somehow. I'm telling God, i got to make up three minutes. But you, you know the only way to do that, right? DeLorean. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys got that joke. I was worried. I was... So let me ask you a question. Who do you trust? you got to trust somebody. Do you trust you? You ever let yourself down? All you got to do is try to go on a diet today. That'll, it'll work right away. I'm telling you, if you, take a, if you take a Girl Scout cookie diet, like you leave church today and you're like, honey, no more Girl Scout. You will find Girl Scout cookies in your house. The Girl Scouts will show up at your house and go, we got all these free cookies to give away. You want some? I mean, you can let yourself down. Do you trust in a politician? <clears throat> I, I know he's kidding. He, right? I'll never forget um, uh, Billy Graham saying that his worst mistake was promoting a certain politician. I think his name was Nixon or something, right? Because he thought he was a good guy. Oops. I want to encourage you to lay your fears before him in prayer. What are you afraid of? What are you frustrated about? What's aggravating you? Is there something aggravating you right now? Is there something you're looking at that's your speed bump? Something you're having a hard time making it over? Something that feels heavy? Something that feels overwhelming? God, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give that to you. By the way, if you're like me, you know, it says present your requests before God. I present them, and then I pick them up and take them back. And then I present them, and then, so I have to go back and say, God, I'm sorry, I keep picking that up. Number two, surrender your compulsion. I love movement. I love action. I love things moving forward. Boring movies are the worst. The worst. That's why I go to theaters with reclining seats. Because if the movie's bad, I'm at least getting a nap. We're getting some production, right? And so the truth is, I like to do things. I like things to go forward. I like things to move forward. But guess what? The, the command in the Bible all the time is, be still. Now, when I was a kid, I can't believe David had this at home. This is a Atari. Is this like the 2600 or so? I don't know what year. They went, this just the, is this the original original? Does this say color or black and white? There's a switch on here. Yeah, there's a switch that says color, color or black and white on here. Channel 2 or 3. But he even found the disc. He heard me tell this story last night. So I'll never forget, we went to the store. It's probably Radio Shack, I don't know. And we picked up Missile Command. And I got Missile Command home. Oh, man, I loved Missile Command. I started playing Missile Command. Aliens were coming. I was going to keep them away. 
And all I remember is I was playing Missile Command, and all of a sudden I realized it's light outside again. I had gotten so focused on the game, so focused on what was going on, I didn't even know time had passed. I was so focused on this that I forgot everything else. You ever have a compulsion where you got to have something? You got to do something and you can't get that out of your head? We are that way. Saul was the same way. Listen to what happens. So Saul waits for seven days, the time set by Samuel. By the way, I can almost imagine the sun comes up on the seventh day and Saul's like, okay, Samuel said he'd be here today. Now. And it continues. But Samuel did not come to Gilgal. And Saul's men began to scatter. So he said, just bring me the burnt offering and the fellowship offerings. And Saul offered up the burnt offering. This is my entire life right here. Just as he finished making the offering, Samuel arrived and Saul went out to greet him. What have you done? Asked Samuel. And here's where you see the big difference. We're going to talk about David next week. Here's the, where you see the big difference between David and Saul. Because when David is confronted by sin, David says, God have mercy on me, I messed up. When Saul's confronted, he says, look what these people did. So listen to what he says next. Saul says, when I saw that the men were scattering, so he blames the men. When I saw that the men were scattering and you didn't come. Nice. At the set time, and the Philistines were assembling at Michmash, I thought, now the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal. I have not sought the Lord's favor. So I felt compelled to offer the burnt offering. You know when we get in the most trouble? When we feel compelled. You ever feel compelled to say something that you've been thinking? When you're the most frustrated, and you're the most aggravated, not when you're calm. Like, you know in your head, you know, I probably should calm down a little bit before I say that. Maybe I shouldn't text that. Maybe I shouldn't post that on Facebook. Maybe, just maybe, I shouldn't have this conversation right now when my face is red. But we're compulsive. We think, i got to do it right now. And the truth is, sometimes the reason we get in trouble is because we don't take time to wait. That's why over and over in Scripture it says, be still and know that He's God. That's hard when emotionally you don't feel still. That's hard when you're going through something and all you can think of is how frustrated you are. And even though on the outside you might look calm, the truth is inside you are so aggravated that it's, you're just swimming all the time. Be still. Be still. By the way, this is why fasting is such a big spiritual principle. Because when we take anything, by the way, you can fast with food. People were asking me about this yesterday. You can fast from food. Nothing wrong with fasting from food. But you can also fast from social media. One of the things I do when I go on vacation is I, ready for this? This is huge. This is huge. I delete my social media apps while I'm gone. And you know what happens when I get home? They're still there when I put them back on, right? But you delete them. Why? So to take a fast, to get step back from some things. What do you need to fast from? Hey, you ready for this? Maybe you need to fast from hurry. When's the last time you set your speed? And, and by the way, some people in here, when I say this, are like, everybody does that. When's the last time you set your speed at the speed limit? I mean, you might die on 95. Maybe that's not smart, but you're right. But, but when's the last time that you didn't try to get somewhere as fast as you could? When's the last time you went to Publix and didn't count how many people were in each line? Or Walmart or Target or wherever you go. I dare you to get in the longest line. I'm telling you, somebody will come and go, oh, go that line is shorter. And you go, nope, I'm going to stay right here today. They'll be like, he must really like that cashier. I don't know. 
Philippians 4, 6, and 7, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Two nights ago, we were home, and all of a sudden I heard, out in the yard. That was like the worst impression ever. It was an owl, and I went outside, and I'm like, man, I heard an owl. I said, Kristen, come out here. You got it's an owl out here. She gave up. Her crazy husband's still standing outside. Two owls talking to each other. I watched them. Finally, this, this big, big owl flew right over to the pine tree right where I was at. And when he got up there, all of a sudden, I didn't notice, a squirrel was on the tree, and the squirrel started going, gah, 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 yelling at the owl. And here's what I said, because I talked to squirrels, which is weird. But I said, you better be quiet. He's going to come and get you. I know how God feels in heaven with me. Like, you better be quiet. And I was thinking, I... Squirrel. So, so what I was... I don't know what happened. That was good timing. So I was thinking, though... That squirrel really needed to be quiet. He was going to make things worse. You ever get so round up and so frustrated that you actually made things worse? We do it all the time. Receive his peace in prayer. That's your next challenge. I want to encourage you to receive his peace in prayer. Take time. Listen, when you're in the middle of something, say, God, would you give me your peace? When you're dealing with something you don't like, God, would you give me your peace? When you're walking through something that's difficult, God, give me your peace. Because here's the deal, even when God doesn't change circumstances or situations, he can give you peace in the middle of it. It's one of the reasons the Roman emperors hated, hated torturing Christians. Because so often the Christians didn't look like they were being tortured. Thank you, lights. All right. Surrender your schedule plan, surrender your compulsion. Number three, be honest about your motivations. Be honest about your motivations. You ever had somebody who you thought was one way and you found out they were another? You ever hire somebody to do something, whether it's an auto mechanic or a contractor? They want half up front. You're like, oh, Gus, I heard he's honest. Never see him again. You thought one thing and things were another way. You thought somebody was your friend until something happened and then all of a sudden they weren't. We all have to look in the mirror. We're so worried about other people's motivation, but we rarely take time to look in the mirror and go, but what's my motive? Am I really being unselfish or do I want people to notice? Am I really doing this for God or am I doing it for this other reason? God, check my heart. Samuel says, you've done a foolish thing. You've not kept the command of the Lord your God gave you. If you had, he would have established your kingdom over Israel for all time. But now your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought after a man after his own heart and appointed him ruler of his people. Because you've not kept the Lord's command. Then Samuel left Gilgal and went up to Gibeah in Benjamin. Now listen to this. This is not in here on accident. So what did Saul do? Saul counted the men who were with him. They numbered about 600. Well, why is that a big deal? Because you remember at the beginning, they looked at the opposing army and said, they're like the seashore. Samuel came and confronted him and said, if you had listened to God, he would bless you. And at the end of the story, Saul is still like, how many people do I still have with me? He's still focused on the wrong thing. And the big difference between Saul and David, as we're going to learn, is not, they didn't, by the way, David blew it too. But when David blew it, he confessed it. He had God check his heart. I want to encourage you. Take time to be honest. Take time to get still sometimes and recognize Maybe I don't have my act together as much as I think I do. One of the things I've noticed about confession when it comes to my prayer time and I have time of confession, pride is almost always an issue where I think I'm a little better than somebody else. Because I am. No, right? Right? (laughs) 
Remember, Saul wanted to promote himself. Paul, Saul tried to act like it was the men's fault, and it was this fault, and that's that fault. But the truth is, Saul just wanted control. Do we struggle with being controlling? Do we just wish God would do what we want him to do, the way we want him to do? I do. So I just have to be honest with God. God, I'd like to run the rule, world. But I need to trust you to do that. By the way, it's exhausting. If you're exhausted, it could be that you've been trying to tell God how to run the world. Therefore, confess your sins to each other, pray for each other, why? So you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. One of the best things you can do is have a friend who you can say, I'm really struggling. I'm really noticing this. I'm really dealing with this issue. One of the reasons I love the men's group that happens every week is that some of the men will say, hey, I'm struggling in this area. Would you pray for me? And sometimes just saying that helps you to take that mask off and recognize that it's not just other people that need help. We all do. We all need His presence. So finally, I would say receive conviction. Practice confession. Years ago, I did something with uh, uh, some really close guys. Like we called it SOAP. We would talk about scripture. We talk about who we were reaching out to. O for outreach. S O A, accountability. We'd say, "How you doing?" And then sometimes we'd say, "And, and is there anything you're lying about?" And then we'd pray for each other. Soap, scripture, outreach, accountability, and prayer. Do you have anybody you can pray with? You have anybody who you don't mind saying, "I'm struggling." If not, I encourage you, start to go out of your way to look for that person. God will give you somebody in your life if you pay attention. Somebody that you can say, this is where I'm struggling because here's the deal. If you're going to let go and let God, like Rodney said, if you're going to be still, there's times that you have to say to somebody, would you pray for me? I'm hurting. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, I'd love to talk to you about what it means to be a Christian. I'll be here after the service. And maybe you just want to come and say, Eric, would you just pray for me? I'll be glad to pray for you today. We're going to close in prayer, and then we're going to have a time of offering. You give what God's put on your heart today, and I want to thank you for being here this morning. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time together. I thank you for your word. I really pray, Lord, help us to let you set the pace. Lord, it's so hard to be still sometimes. It's so hard to trust you, Lord, when things don't go the way we want them to. But, Lord, I pray in the middle of all this, through your spirit, you would give us strength. Through your spirit, you would give us peace. Through your spirit, we would understand that you are in charge. Lord, thank you that we can trust you today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.